This is Kenneth Wong, contributing editor for Desktop Engineering Magazine. Last week, I had an excuse to pop into Autodesk Gallery right by the Ferry Building in San Francisco. You see, I was invited to attend a workshop there by Terry, co-founder and CEO of Sustainable Minds. Sustainable Minds is a life cycle assessment software delivered in the Software as a Service or SaaS model. No installation. Just sign up for an account. Then begin using it online from a browser. What does it do? For a start, it measures the environmental impact of your product or project using something called the Ocala method. We'll talk more about that later. But first, let's see what we can do with the software. First, you set up a project to get a better understanding of perhaps a product already in existence. After all, you cannot improve on something unless you have fully studied it. So I'll set up a project for Grab and Go Toaster for an imaginary food happy industry owned and run by my toasty family. I'll put a few words in about the project scopes, then upload a photo or an image of the product. Then we come to something called functional unit. It's a bit difficult to grasp, for me at the very least, because this input feel depends on your product or your goal, and this might have something entirely different for you. But for this one, let's just leave it at the default to be measured as one hour of a use. At this point, you're ready to study your first concept, which is usually your reference concept. Let's think of it this way. It's not immediately clear if a car that pumps out two tons of carbon for each mile is good or bad, unless you compare it to another one that runs just as smooth but produces only 0.25 or less carbon. So your first concept is your baseline, against which you'll measure the rest. Now once again, we have to deal with a functional unit. I need to enter the total amount of service delivered by my product. I'm putting in 104. No, it's not a random number I pull out of the air. I figure a toaster will be used two hours a week on average. So for a year, that's the intended lifespan of my toaster, the number is 104. Hey, you can dispute that if you have contradicting data. Now we get to the system BOM, BOM. Well, you can think of that as the bill of materials that encompasses not only what's needed to make the part, but also to acquire the raw material, transport it, then recycle it or dispose it when the part is retired. Here, as a CAD user, your job is a little bit easier because you can export your toaster assembly's bill of material as an Excel file, then save it as a tab-separated text file then you can upload that instead of manually entering each part one at a time to sustainable mines. Now if you happen to use Autodesk Inventor, you can upload your exported BOM pretty much straight away. Sustainable Mines and Autodesk have a partnership, so the company has done the legwork to map Inventor materials with Sustainable Mines materials. If you're using something else, however, you might need to open your BOM and reformat it to match Sustainable Mines BOM template which you can download and check. In some cases, the software found multiple matches, so you might need to fix that. In other cases, it couldn't find a match for your material, so you'll have to manually edit that and pick a material from Sustainable Minds database. Now, if everything looks correct, you import it to the system bomb. You might notice that there are some materials for which no manufacturing processes are available or no end-of-life options are listed. That's because Sustainable Minds database is still a work in progress, so it really can use your help to associate certain materials with the processes commonly used to process them. An end-of-life process measurement is still in development for some, I'm told. Okay, at this point I'm ready to check the scorecard of my reference concept, so let's see. Now just from this total impact wheel, I can tell one of the biggest contributors to my product's impact is ecotoxicity. So I check this for tips on how to reduce it. I'm now going to make a copy of it to explore other design options. I'm just going to get right to the heart. Let's go to the system bomb, then switch out some of the materials with better ones.
Looking at the comparative scorecards, I now realize I've just dropped the Ocala point by one point. A small victory, you might say. Now watch what happens when I switch the end-of-life method from disposal at a landfill or an incinerator to recycling program. See the dramatic results? Well, that's the basic idea. I should point out that the science of life cycle assessment is, at the moment, a controversial one because there is a lack of consensus on how to do it. Ocala is one of a handful of systems developed primarily in North America, so using it for Asia regions opens your results to debate. Ideally, I wish sustainable miners directly linked to a 3D modeling system so every time I change the extrusion height of a handle or the radius of a hole, I can immediately see its impact. Since I'll be in an environment where I can perform stress tests, if I switch material, I can also make sure that my eco-friendly material won't compromise my model's strength. Another feature I'd love to see is perhaps the ability to export the results as PDF or HTML file so I can share it with others or archive it. At the present time, there is no standard taxonomy for materials, as Sustainable Mind CEO Terry puts it. And that makes it a huge challenge to incorporate these automatic carbon tallying formulas and algorithms into a CAD system. For another product in this field, please check out my coverage of SolidWorks Sustainability Express. Until next time, this is Kenneth Wong for Desktop Engineering, wishing you a sustainable afternoon.